Hey everybody, today's topic is the single stroke rule. It's our very first rudiment. It's the one, it's just singles. It's a right hand, it's a left hand. They go back and forth. The faster we get, that's when we turn it into a roll. Now, at this point, what techniques do we need to get there? To get from slow to fast to slow? Well, I would say we're going to start with a legato stroke. We're actually not going to just start with it. We're going to use the legato or free stroke all the way through it. What is the legato and free stroke? This is where you let the stick just bounce. Okay? Let it bounce. Now, my fingers are riding the stick on that bounce. All the way back to the pinky. Both right and left hand. And notice, okay, I'm using the wrist, even though the stick is, is in legato motion, back through the pinky, I'm using my wrist. The faster we go, we're going to transition from wrist to wrist and fingers, and then all the way to fingers for when we want to play fast. And then when we slow it down, we're going to be with fingers playing fast, and we're going to go the opposite direction, fingers to fingers and wrists, back all the way to wrists. But the whole time we're trying to incorporate the, the legato stroke. Okay, here's an example. We're with wrists. And I'm, my sticks are just free at the moment. Yes, we're all the way back to the pinky still. But the faster I get, now I'm incorporating my fingers more. So this is wrist and fingers. Faster I get, we switch to fingers. Back to fingers and wrists. Back to wrists. And the free stroke's still happening. Now I see a lot of kids when they first start this and they're still trying to figure out what technique is and how their hands move and how their fingers are incorporated and all that. They'll do this. Almost all of them will do this. They'll get latched onto the stick and then this won't change. I mean, they're latched on. They might not be white knuckling yet, but they're latched on. And they start and, you know, it's okay. It's okay. And then they're beating the drum, like harder. And then the faster they go, they, 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 incur, they just lock in. And it's just like all of a sudden the wrist and the elbow and the shoulder all get locked up and they're just trying to like muscle their way through it from the shoulder down to their hand. So they're doing one of these. You do not want to do that. It's totally uncomfortable, and man, when you play, it just sounds terrible, especially when you're on a real drum. Ooh, boy. Tell you what. Mm -mm, not fun. So, you want to get your students, or if you are a student, just remember, relax. Let the stick and the pad do the work, okay? Let the stick bounce. Yes, I'm letting it bounce. I'm catching it slightly with all of my fingers but I notice if you can see it my fingers aren't locked around the stick they're just riding the stick that's important let the stick function okay and then start working your way to just your fingers and then back out to your wrist um, at this point I would like you all if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel um, hit the bell icon also hit the like that always helps us out, especially for new people like myself. We want to grow the channel. We'd love all the support we could get. So if you're new, that would be awesome. And for all you people that have returned and are hitting that like button, um, hey, thanks for coming back and supporting. All right, so um, how, do you keep, how do you keep it even? When you're a younger student, you get a lot of this. This isn't so bad at this tempo. But then all of a sudden, and it probably has something to do when they lock their arms up, but all of a sudden you get this. This is even, and then pretty soon you get this. You know, it's kind of like lopsided, either all rights or all lefts. So how do we even that out? A couple ways to do this. 
first of all, be cognizant of what you're doing. Listen, when it starts to get uneven, back it off. Back it off just enough to where it evens out again. And then push it a little bit faster. And then back it off if you have to, but push it a little bit faster. You have to remember that with, with the rudiments, with drumming, with music in general, okay, what when you're learning, what you're doing is you have to think of it as a marathon and not a sprint. Okay, you're not going to just get it. All right, sure, there will be something. Somebody will throw you something later on down the road, and you're going to be like, "Oh yeah, I can do that," you know, on drum set or whatever, um, or a lick on the snare drum or something, and you'll be like, "Yeah, I got that." But nine times out of ten, you're going to have to practice just a lot. Okay. And that's perfectly fine. Remember, if you hit a brick wall and you're playing, like you get to a place where you can't get forward, take a break and realize one thing. The wall is always breakable. Okay? Say that with me. The wall is always breakable. Now, it may not break in your first lesson, it may not break in a week. It may not break in a month. It may not break in a year. But the thing is, keep going. Keep working on it. Okay? Most things you'll be able to do fairly quickly. Okay? But even as a professional, even as a professional musician and teacher and whatnot, I still come across things every so often that take a while. Okay? That might take five months, but you know what? As long as I stick with it and I practice it a little bit every single day, I always break the wall. Always. There's never been a wall I haven't been able to break as long as I've stayed focused and, and kept this up. So remember, the wall is always breakable. Now, back to evening this out. So, listen. If you get to this, slow down and get even again. It's okay. Then in a couple of days, maybe a week, you're a little bit faster and you might get back to this again. Slow down, lock in, and try and push it. Okay, it's always very important to slow down, lock back in, and then push it again. One problem that I see a lot with younger students, and some older ones, is that the reason it's uneven is that you're favoring your dominant hand. Now, I'm right-handed. Most people are right-handed. Um, but you favor your, your dominant hand. Left-handed people seem to favor their left hand. That just makes sense, okay? So, I always try and tell students, especially the younger ones, can you get your pad or your drum or something in front of a mirror? Get a mirror in front of you because when you're in my position right now and I'm looking down, I know because I'm doing it on purpose that my right hand is higher than my left. But when you look down, it's hard to determine that when you're looking down at it. But when you're looking at it from where you folks are looking, you can tell right away that my right hand is higher than my left. And probably for left-handed people, it would be this. The left hand is higher than the right. And at that point, it gets uneven when you get faster. It's, it's just physics. So what you want to do, a mirror is always a great idea. Whether, you, whether it's for this or, or on drum set or whatnot. I wish I had a, in this particular environment I wish I had a place to put a mirror like so I could see my feet or you know or a mirror in front of the drum set where I could see myself play I know Steve Smith who's my all-time hero drum set player he uses the mirrors all the time I remember in college we had mirrors up for the marimba and the timpani and snare drums and all that and it really really does help but for this like I said you want to look at it and see if that is your problem is it a stick height issue okay um, and then you can fix it. You can see it. You can see it in front of you. It's a whole nother angle. Another thing is I always tell people record. Record yourself a little bit. You know, put the recorder on. You can use your phone, iPad, 
computer, maybe you've still got a cassette deck you put in there and hit the record button, but record yourself, listen back, all right? Next up, I wanna show you guys a finger exercise that I learned a little while back that has helped me and many of my students develop muscle in, through your index finger, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your pinky. And that helps with this because what are we doing when we play fast? We're using all of those together. And yeah, some of them are not up to speed and we're all because of physicality. So this little exercise I'm about to show you will, will hopefully help that. It's helped almost every student I've had. I don't, remember, I don't even know of a student that it hasn't helped. And you just do it for, for you know 30 seconds, a minute. That's another thing I wanna talk about. How long should you practice this in a practice session? Well, 30 seconds to a minute. It's <laughs> just like I just said. Um, you don't need to do much more than that. I mean, if you want to, sure, go ahead. But you don't need to, okay? 30 seconds to a minute at least five days a week, okay? I don't practice seven days a week. I think you need a break here and there. Um, I know personally, my brain recharges and then I come back I'm like oh that thing I couldn't do two days ago and I took a break and I went and did something else and I come back all of a sudden a lot of times it just lands and you're like oh that's why couldn't I do that two days ago so I think taking a couple days off a week is an excellent idea if you're just practicing the single stroke roll here's how long you should practice it but you need to be concentrating on it How long was that? Somebody in the comments, write down how long that was. Um, I wasn't checking it, but I know it was less than a minute. Do that again the next day and the next day. But the goal is don't get it to where it's sloppy, where it's like choppy. And that's bad, okay? Um, so get it up to there. You hit that point where it gets ugly, back it off a little bit, try and push it, then slow it back down. On to the next day, all right? Same thing with this, with this uh, finger exercise you're about to see. It doesn't take that long, really, and you're just working, being cognizant of what your fingers are doing and getting them strengthened up. All right, everybody, so here's my finger technique, or my finger exercise, should I say. So you're gonna wanna hold the stick in its normal playing position, but if you see this, instead of holding the stick in the American grip, I'm gonna hold it in this really bizarre position that I don't think we would ever play in a million years. But this is to gain strength throughout your fingers. That's solely why we do this. So I'm gonna hold like this, and I'm gonna use my index finger to move the stick around the thumb. It's holding on, but it's also making the stick bounce, okay? Then you go on, and then you use it just to hold, and you use your middle finger Front pad, front pad, not, not back here, but front pad. And then use it to bounce the stick, okay? I'm just using the middle finger, not the first finger. Then when you're comfortable with that, guess what? You go to your ring finger, get your middle finger out of the way and go to your ring finger, again, using the top pad. And notice that weird weird holding that I've got going on okay and now you're just you're just using the ring finger to push the stick back and forth and I guess what you're gonna go to your pinky then get all the other fingers out of the way pinky you do that right-handed you do that left-handed and then when you get good at it you can make this really fast. I like to warm up with this exercise just about every, every time I get with sticks. And I do eight on each finger from the, from the index to the pinky and back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stop. And you do that right handed, you do it left handed. And over the course of time, it gets really easy. Then all of a sudden, 
all those fingers are strengthened up and you can use them throughout all your playing. And it's really important. I hope you enjoyed today's topic on the single stroke roll. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments section. Also, hit those subscribe and like buttons and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any content. And until the next time, I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.